Okay, if you listen closely, you can hear distortion on the decay. Okay, and what this is, is we have crossover distortion occurring. And we're going to show you on the oscilloscope what this looks like. When striking the note, you'll note there's a couple of dots in the uh, in the waveform. That's crossover distortion at its early stages. Pulling the uh, time per division out a little further let you see the dots, that's occurring here and here. And they get worse as the, uh, the, the, the level goes down. That's usually caused by the uh, 10, uh, 12, 14, and 9. And as far as the transistors are concerned, they're not working very well as a coupled pair. And my guess is one of them has been damaged. Although it's hard to see it sometimes, or even hear it if it's not connected to the read bar and some musical note. All right, the uh, problem occurs with uh, these two drivers here, 10, 14, and then we have 9 and uh, 12. Uh, the, uh, the problem is, is that the transistors themselves, <clears throat> the way they wired, often get damaged. And when they get damaged, you can't be sure they'll track each other anymore. So, in the interest of uh, uh, economy, you understand, since it is simply cheaper to change all of them rather than troubleshoot it for several hours, that's exactly what we're going to do. And this way here, we're guaranteed that if any of the others have been damaged, that they're replaced with a brand fresh new one. Okay, this... Uh characteristic of crossover distortion is generally caused by a damaged transistor. In other words, partially fried, but not enough to completely knock it out. That would make it easy to find. Um, because the, uh, the uh, main power transistors here uh, occur and run at high levels, you see the crossover distortion only becomes evident when the uh, note decays and it's a lower level because then the signal primarily comes not from the outputs but from the drivers themselves and that's when it becomes more critical. Uh, in a class uh, class AB uh, amplifier output stage, which this is, uh, you have situations where, and this one's complementary, so you have an NPN on one side and the PNP on the other. Now ideally these characteristic curves for the parts should trace each other. In other words, if one represents the positive half of your sine wave and the other represents the negative half, uh, they should be complementary. In other words, one should trace out the sine wave perfectly like the other. What happens is if they don't, there is a sort of a, a notch in between the two. And that is the notch you saw on the oscilloscope. It's called crossover distortion. Uh, that's not to be confused with THD, which is total harmonic distortion. That uh, carries some other problems in a high-fidelity amplifier. Crossover distortion is caused by bad parts or insufficient bias so that they are um, not working properly in sync. In this case, the bias is, is not set with a potentiometer. It's automatic and uh, you're referring to a condition where it can't compensate because of a partially defective part. All right, we've changed the transistors, and as you can see, the crossover distortion is gone. It's no longer there. And, of course, when the note is allowed to decay on a very long sustain, it's not doing its thing like it did before. 
So the, uh, the end solution, of course, is to change the transistors. As I said, it takes less time to change all four than it does to, uh, to change uh, just one or two, and that's the end of it. And it's not economical either from a, a standpoint of um, material labor and, uh, of course, other inconvenience to your customer or to your band. And uh, that would conclude the, uh, the end result for this unit, and uh, it's going to be placed back in service.